Hi and welcome to the Bite Size Garden. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built a row of raised wicking bed gardens in my front yard using IBC tanks. If this is something you're interested in doing too, feel free to hit me up with any questions in the comment section below. You may also want to stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to show you what I did before I started the build to help wrap my head around the design and work out how it was all going to come together. But for the moment, let's get on with the show. With the ponds settling in nicely, it was time to launch into the next phase of the front yard makeover. I'm not sure about your front yard, but I've always found ours to be a bit of a wasted space. And on our small inner suburban block, I want to make better use of that space. So the plan is to clear everything out, pull down the picket fence and build seven one by one meter raised IBC wicking bed gardens. Once the yard was tidied up a bit, it was time to carefully measure everything. You can never measure too many times, especially around this area where the water meter was. These pebbles were left over from building the pond and will be useful later on, so for the moment, I just need to move them out of the way. Then it was time to say goodbye to the picket fence. Shout out to my neighbour Brad who offered to help out with this build. Without his guidance I'm certain this project wouldn't have gone as smoothly as it did. Keen to make a start, I got digging on the first post hole. The aim is to keep these as tight as possible so you don't need too much concrete to fill it in. Still waiting on the posts and not wanting to leave holes all over the front yard, I decided to tidy up the picket fence a bit first. My wife is an art teacher and had a plan to use these pickets in a school project, so I wanted to keep them. There was a lot of soil left over in the yard from digging out the pond and I knew even more had to go, so it was time to get a skip in. You know how I said the aim was to keep these holes small? Well, sometimes my aim was a little off, but I'll show you how to fill in those later on. Given this is the front yard and people are walking past all the time, if we left the site unattended we made sure we covered up any of the holes so no one could accidentally fall in. This metal frame is from an old IBC tank I already had and was really helpful in spacing out the beds. Once we had the spacing right, we used pieces of the old fence to frame up with. These were cut to the correct length so made lining up the posts much easier. You can see this a little bit better in close up later on. For the holes that got too big, we used rocks, old concrete and broken bricks to help fill in the holes. Yes, I probably should have painted these before cementing them in, but I wanted to give them a little bit of extra protection against moisture. With the important work done, I let Brad get back to his family and turn my attention to building the frames for the beds. Knowing that timber moves a little bit, I didn't pre-cut everything before I started this build because I wanted that flexibility to measure and cut things to the exact right length. 
it did take a little bit of time and trimming to make sure all the timber fitted perfectly where they were supposed to, but I think the end result is much better. Once I knew they were trimmed perfectly, it was time to paint them. It was particularly important to do a good job on the bottom timber because this was going to be in contact with the soil and might be wet for long periods. I tried a few different ways of fixing the sleepers in place. I wasn't too fussed because they were a pretty snug fit and weren't going to move too much. One thing I did do later was to use star pickets to tie the longer sleepers together. Now it was time to get started with the IBC tanks. Because I'll be growing food in these and couldn't be certain where the secondhand ones were coming from, I got three brand new food grade approved tanks. Each tank will be cut in half to make two beds. To do this I need to first undo the cage, pull it out, mark it up and cut it using the angle grinder. Once the container was cut, I could use it to measure and cut the cage, being sure to go back and smooth off any rough edges afterwards. I do have one secondhand tank and I'm not entirely sure where that came from before I got it, so just to be safe, I'll only be using it to grow ornamentals and beneficial plants. This is really important because you don't want to be growing food in anything that has had harmful chemicals in it. All the tanks cut it was time to add the rest of the sleepers and finish off the bed frames but before I locked them into place I made sure to seal up the lids and taps with silicon a really important feature of a wicking bed is an overflow valve so it doesn't fill up with water these were drilled through and sealed in place they sit 10 centimeters off the bottom of the tank leaving 40 centimeters for soil Only four out of the seven beds have bases, so the other three were propped up on bricks to make sure that they all sit at the same height. Once all the beds are in place, the last of the timber planks can be attached. Wicking beds work by holding a reservoir of water in the bottom 20% or so of the bed. The soil and plants can then draw up the water as needed. The black ag pipe allows for plenty of water storage while the gravel that I moved earlier fills in any gaps and gives the soil a solid foundation to sit on. This small piece of pipe is used to fill the tank during dry spells. The second hand IBC tank was a bit of an experiment for me so I used this old plastic pallet instead of ag pipe. 
but the main aim is the same, to create space for the water to sit in. I didn't quite have enough gravel left over from the pond bill, so I had to use scoria to fill in the rest. On top of that goes weed matting to help separate the gravel and the soil. seven brand new self-watering garden beds. But I wasn't finished just yet. IBC tanks are not the prettiest thing in the world, so I did want to put some capping on the top. And this capping was going to serve a few other purposes too. Not only would it help protect the IBC tanks from the harsh sunlight, but it would also give me a space to stand on if I needed to access around the garden. After the capping was finished, the last thing I wanted to do was make up some frames so that the plants didn't spill out onto the footpath. And I did have to reattach the neighbour's fence to a new fence post. And with a final lick of paint, it was all finished. A year on and with a new brick path, I'm really happy with the result. The wicking beds are working really well and it has totally transformed our front yard. For those wanting to see what I did prior to the build, here it is. Now it may seem simple, but building a scale model out of things like cardboard and milk containers is a very cheap and effective way of working out sizing and planning out some of those more intricate details that are hard to visualize in your head. It's definitely something that I'll do in later builds.